another month, another set of unique equipment. It's pretty much clockwork now. And as always, shout out to the lovely Miss Nyara for putting together this spreadsheet. Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about the fourth batch of unique equipments. This one is honestly kind of like, it's low-key disappointing, but it really, I guess they really make sense. And so today, my guys, as you can see, we have Kaori, Makoto, Hatsune, Lima, Rin, and Mahiru. So there honestly is not overly much to say aside from the fact that if you don't know what unique equipments are, if you don't know what is going on, go check out one of my first unique equipment videos where I actually go through the requirements, what exactly they do, and the impact that they probably are going to have on the game. But then again, talking about impact, especially today, it's okay, it, let's just get into it. How about that? Let's just get into it. And so first off, we have Kari, our favorite single target physical attacker. With the introduction of her unique equipment, all we're getting is an 80% damage increase in her skill 1. This actually does convert to quite a significant amount of damage, so it's about 40% increase. And combined with the fact that it is given attack and crit two very crucial stats for Kari you know it's it's pretty good it is a high craft priority as Miss Nyara has put it however the issue that I have with Kari and Makoto's UEs are that they they don't really change their playstyle at all they don't exactly give you like more options they don't really change team comps or anything and that's interesting because as we go down like you will see more I would say impactful UEs anyway back to Kari in terms of like physical damage or like for PvP I think think Kari is, is finally out. And I guess the massive reason is because of units like Christina, we got Tomo, we have Muimi now. Kari is unfortunately in an extremely unsafe position, like what, she's in front of Nozomi, she's only really behind like Jun, Miyako, Lima, and so especially with the cleave meta, like Kari is just gonna freaking get wrecked in PvP. Now, let's talk about Kari and even Makoto's craft and level rating here. My opinion is that although they are lackluster and they don't really do anything new, they are still very very solid. However, the reason that I would agree with the high craft rating is because like they are used virtually everywhere. Makoto obviously a lot more than Kaori considering she brings the defense down which we pretty much always need but Kaori especially with her UE and these pretty nice stats like she is certainly going to be a mainstay in CB for quite a long time. So it's more because we're going to use them so much that I would recommend crafting them at a high priority but otherwise in terms of leveling priority I would probably bump them up to high. Like if you are using Makoto and Kaori especially Especially in the context of CB, these stats are, they're really, really freaking good. Kaori's is better because she gets 59 more crit, whereas Makoto on the other hand is getting more attack but less crit. I think at this point we are going to start seeing the crit be a little bit more impactful than just straight attack, especially with the introduction of Valentine Shizuru. And so yeah, that's Kaori for me, high craft priority and probably a high level priority as well. Alright, and so moving through, we have Makoto next, like I said, disappointing, it doesn't really like enable new things. And the fact fact of the matter is, is that her UE, the buffs OMP attack by 750 for 12 seconds, as well as gaining a 45% increase in the damage for skill 1, the hard slash. It's okay, it's cool, it's quite solid, it's also boring. But that, my friends, is the reality of it, and considering how much we use Makoto, it is certainly a high craft and a high level priority as well for me. Alright, and so with the boring ones out of the way, let's move on to Hatsune over here. Now, Hatsune, our magical sniper, which is so weird to say considering she looks like very mage. With her UE, she gets a 15% damage increase to her skill 1 as well as a debuff for M defense for 20 and this is going to last for 12 seconds. Pretty good I think, especially considering like when she's used in PvP, she's used to snipe the H Miyakos, the H Shinobus. A lot of the time it's to take care of those cleavers so like Hatsune shoots off the skill 1, targets the highest P attack enemy and then if you have like a Halloween Shinobu or like a Ninon or something and then they do the cleave, hopefully that target will actually die. Generally, Generally speaking, that's kind of the utility, the use case for this one here. And the fact that the UE now gives M defense down, hopefully you'll be able to have a couple more opportunities, like where previously you may not have been able to one-shot a H Shinobu, maybe you can now. Now, in terms of the attack, so going from 216 attack up to 656, as well as getting 50 in crit, I would say that that is, it's quite vital. And the reason that it's so vital is because of the reason I gave before, right? If you can one-shot that H Shinobu, like at the very, very very start of the round, it's going to be so massive. But aside from those two stats, we are also getting P defense. Honestly, an increase in 5 P defense from 3 to 8, even 8 P defense, it's unlikely to save you. And so 
So this time, I 100% agree with Miss Nyara's rating of high craft and high level priority. Of course, only if you are a PvP main. All right, so next we have Lima, and Lima is kind of one of the characters that I was alluding to before, where she actually brings something different to the table, which may enable something new. I think Lima's UE, whilst boring, it could make a lot of things happen. So as we all know, Lima, at the start of the fight, she actually starts off field and then runs in. With the introduction of her UE, she is going to get a moderate increase to her P defense as she comes in, but she is also going to be giving a physical barrier up to 3600 to all allies for 16 seconds. Just a couple of use cases that I can already think of, like defending against the Tamaki or the Arisa S1, where they go ahead and throw some shit at your mages and then like a lot of the time they actually end up dying. I'm talking especially even like your Ilya. And then on the other hand, remembering that this physical barrier is for all allies, Lima becomes one of our first answers to cleave physical cleave units such as Ninon, Reno, but especially Halloween Shinobu. So the opportunity, the possibility that I keep talking about is that we can actually survive a little bit longer with these carries that we potentially could not have used before. This could be more frontliners, this could be mages, this could certainly be Ilya. And then on the other hand, you've got these stat stick, 187 attack, 68 pdef, and 53 mdef. Miss Nyara has rated this as a low, I would say it's even a medium. It is quite solid, 68 and 53 defenses. If I head on back to like uh, Kurumi UE, Kurumi UE gives all defense plus 60, which is actually quite similar to the stats we're getting for Lima's UE. And honestly, I would rate Kurumi's UE like quite highly in terms of the level priority. And so therefore I would rate Lima similarly. I think it's a medium. I certainly think it is a medium, but it is certainly something that you could live without. But this barrier, this physical barrier for everybody, man, I freaking rate it, dude. And so absolutely high craft priority. If you guys are PV, P mains, these two are actually going to change a lot for you. All right, otherwise, let's have a look at Rin next. So very much a PvP only unit and Mahiru as well. But first, let's come back to Rin. So with the introduction of her UE, her skill one is going to be going from an AOE buff of M defense from 120 up to 140. But on top of that, she is also giving 1.5k P attack as well as 50 P crit. Like my guys, let me just come back over here real quick and let's have a look at this Shinobu. Shinobu's UE, AOE buffs P attack by one. 1200 MP crit by 50 for 12 seconds, 225 range, I don't know man. Rin seems kind of cracked out to me. And Miss Nyara has noted that Rin spams this skill. <laughs> It sounds so freaking good, man. Like, honestly, that is so freaking cracked. That's even better than Mother Effin Makoto's UE. However, despite this cracked looking kit, she actually does not see overly much use, if any, in CB. And that is certainly where something like this buff would actually thrive really hard. Looking at the stat stick itself, P defense, M defense, a little bit of attack, but the best part about it is the HP boost plus 75. That is honestly really, really freaking good. Like, I always rate HP boost, TP boost, because it always makes their skills like a lot more potent, right? Like for me, Pekrin before was never an issue. But now with her UE, like she is so freaking annoying. 38 of the HP boost as well as the heal and not even to mention that absorb barrier. I just think that these boosts are so freaking nutty. You guys get it? Rin, nuts. <laughs> and so on top of it being an AOE magic defense buff and with some, well, a lot of physical attack qualities, I think Miss Nyara is right on the mark with this note over here. Great staller for defense and good counter to magic heavy comps. Rin, when she was first released and especially with the introduction of her shards in I believe like the dungeon shop or something, she certainly saw a lot of play especially in Princess Arena where you would run into a stall, it has Rin, it's like running into like a double Kokoro stall or running into like a Tamaki stall blind or like a Misato stall blind. Running into a Rin stall blind is just as bad pretty much. And with this HP boost, it's even worse. I I personally really rate it, however, the craft, priority, medium, like as awesome as this is, I can't say that I would craft this over a lot of the other ones. Because like many of you, I am also starved of those hard shards. So for example, if it was medium and I come back and look over here, I honestly don't even have like the 
Ana Yui. I don't have the Akari, the Yori, the Jun. If I come back over here, let's have a look. I don't even have Ninon. I don't have Tamaki. I would say that I would take a lot of these other offensive units that would give me options. Tamaki, Ninon, potentially even Reno, because like all of these different characters, these offensive characters, with their UEs, they give you more options, right? Whereas a Rin, a Rin stall, after you know it's a stall, they're typically quite easy to break. It's just that generally speaking, your first attack is going to lose. All right, and so with that, we are coming up to our last character. Mahiru. Mahiru is an interesting one. She actually does an incredible amount of damage. And we're going to see even more damage coming out, especially with the UE, where she gains 115% to her multiplier. But on top of that, her knockback is going to get a 400 range increase. But on top, on top of that, you are also going to get a confuse for 7 seconds with the UE. For you guys who have not had the pleasure of using Eo or like H Misaki, confuse is, is so freaking annoying. For me, the only real downside about this one over here is the fact that it is single target. Otherwise, it looks freaking busted as hell. And then on the side of the stat stick itself, it is giving you well, most predominantly the TP boost plus 15. I think that is quite fantastic. Good to troll on solo and tank comps. I, I guess so. I reckon Mahiru definitely would work on double tank comps. There's just, you just got to think about it a little bit, right? And you know what? Maybe one day I will do a Mahiru video with the UE and showcase it. I don't know. We'll see. But coming back to it, in terms of the craft priority and leveling priority, unfortunately, as fun as it sounds, I'm going to have to say that the craft priority is a low. And the reason is because more in terms of the popularity or un popularity of Mahiru. A lot of the times when you're looking for counters for PvP or if you're looking up like some team comps to do the new hard stage or something, I would guess that about like 99.99999% of the time you're not going to see Mahiru. And so my advice would be that if you don't understand Mahiru or if you don't put in the time to understand Mahiru and where she could potentially work, then I would probably say don't bother with her. However, with that said though, if you do end up crafting it, I would rate the level priority medium, medium high, especially because of the TP boost. To be honest, a very interesting character. I am actually farming Mahiru shards right now. So like I said, maybe one day. I don't know. We'll see. We'll freaking see. However, with that, my guys, that brings us to the end of batch four unique equipments. And so let me know how you feel about these unique equipments. Did you feel like I kind of hit the mark or was I kind of off? Who are you going to slam in terms of unique equipments? For me, it's probably Kari and Makoto at least. And as much as I want Lima, I don't think I'm going to have the heart shards for it. I don't know. Maybe I'll do the unlock. I'll probably do the unlock if I do have enough shards. But yeah, again, like it's disappointing that the fun ones are actually the PvP ones ones and the, the good ones, the really solid ones are the boring ones. But yeah, let me know whose UEs you are going to slam on. And if you do end up leaving a comment down below, I would really appreciate that because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. So thank you guys so much. On the other hand, if this video did help you or you did like it, then please consider a like. And if you would like to see more, then please subscribe. Otherwise, as your girl Kari once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye bye.